Welcome to Shujin Academy VGM Club. I'm Professor Tom, your faculty sponsor. Is there a better known piece of video game music than Koji Kondo's theme for Super Mario Brothers? If there is, I can't think of it. But if your ears are particularly sharp, you might have picked up that something was different about what we just heard. That wasn't the NES version of Super Mario Brothers, and that wasn't even from the Super Nintendo version found on the Super Mario All-Stars cartridge. Instead, it was long, long ago from Super Mario RPG, arranged by Yoko Shimomura. This episode of Shujin Academy VGM Club is all about alternate, lesser-known reinterpretations of classic video game songs. And I don't mean arranged tracks done with real instruments. There's a whole other podcast devoted to that, and it's called REVGM, and it's hosted by Martyrus, and it's quite good. No, the idea for today's episode is that it's songs that are familiar, or at least familiar to me, but instead of being the version we all know by heart, they're from a different game, and there's something different about them. Maybe they're slowed down, or maybe they're sped up, or they're interpreted through the lens of a much different musical genre, or maybe they're coming through very different hardware than the original. It's fascinating to hear how the different sound chips or composers or in-game context can lead to a new take on a familiar song. I started out with a Super Mario RPG song, and I'm going to keep the train rolling with another song from that soundtrack. Yoko Shimomura's soundtrack for that game borrows a lot of Sonic motifs from the parent Mario series, but our second song from this game is not inspired by traditional Mario Brothers music. Square worked with Nintendo to create Super Mario RPG, and the game has a secret boss named Kulex. Instead of pulling inspiration from the Mario series, though, Kulex is inspired by the villains of the Final Fantasy series, and appropriately enough, he fights Mario and the gang with a set of elemental crystals. Kulex's fight theme song is virtually the same as one of the combat songs from Final Fantasy IV, but there's a special Game Over song just for the Kulex battle called Game Over Kulex that's a slowed-down version of the original Nobuo Oematsu Final Fantasy IV track, and I think that one's much more interesting, so that's the one I'm going to feature. I'll start off with a little of the original track, which is Fight Two from Final Fantasy IV, and then we'll hear the Super Mario RPG song. Enjoy! <laughs>
Now, let's talk about River City Ransom. I'm a card-carrying member of the Original Games fan club, enough so that the original version of this show's artwork was modified River City Ransom sprites. This game is a cult classic, and that was enough for publisher Atlas to release an expanded port for the Game Boy Advance in 2004. The port is called River City Ransom EX, and it included an upgraded soundtrack. As a side note, Doing the research for this episode taught me that there's an X68000 version of River City Ransom, and now I need to see if there's a fan translation for that so I can play it. Anyway, I love the original NES soundtrack, and I think the remade soundtrack is also worth checking out. We'll hear Running Around the City and Shopping. Both the original and the remake of the game were composed by Kazuo Sawa, and I'll play some of the NES songs before playing the Game Boy Advance songs in full.
Next, let's visit another NES series and its remakes. I'm talking about Mega Man. The original NES hexology is pretty well known, but there was a Sega Genesis remake of the first three games released in a compilation called Mega Man The Wily Wars. Now, Japan and Europe got this cart, but where I live in North America, it only saw the light of day on the Sega Channel, which was a special service Sega offered via some cable television providers to let you download and play Genesis games. Unfortunately for me, the small town where I spent my wayward teenage years didn't offer the Sega Channel. It's honestly a miracle that MTV was available. Regardless, Wily Wars composer Kinuya Yamashita used the Genesis sound chip to create some cool new takes on the classic NES soundtracks composed by Manami Matsumae, Takashi Tateishi, Yasuaki Fujita, and Harumi Fujita. Everything on the Wily Wars soundtrack is worth checking out but I like to keep my episodes to a reasonable length, so I'm going to go with two well-known tracks from Takashi Tateishi's Mega Man 2 soundtrack, Metal Man and Dr. Wily Stage 1. I'll play a little of each NES track before playing the full Genesis track. <laughs>
Speaking of Mega Man, let's talk about Mega Man 7. One of the bosses in that game is named Shade Man, and he's a vampire-themed robot master. His level is an homage to Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins series, complete with robot zombies, robot bats, robot werewolves, and even a portrait of Dr. Wily dressed as Count Dracula. To complete this tribute, Capcom went so far as to add an easter egg where you can hold down the B button when you choose Shade Man's stage and you'll get music that's a kinetic Mega Man style rendition of composer Ayako Mori's classic Ghosts and Goblins theme from the original arcade game. The reworking for Mega Man 7 was done by game composers Yuko Takehara, Toshihiko Horiyama, and Makoto Tomozawa. Enjoy a little of the arcade original and then the full reworking. When I think of Contra, I think of it as an NES game first and foremost, only that's not actually the case. It really began life in the arcade, and then Konami ported it to the Nintendo Entertainment System, and also the MSX2, and then they let some third parties license it and port it to multiple other platforms. But it all started in the arcade, and I don't know about you, but I've never actually seen a Contra cabinet in real life. I might have once seen a cabinet for its sequel Super Contra, Maybe. I think the NES version is actually superior from a gameplay perspective, even if it doesn't look quite as good. You can check both of them out in the Contra collection available for modern platforms if you want to give them a try side by side. But the arcade version's FM soundtrack is definitely superior to the NES soundtrack. So far in this episode, I've been going from the original releases to the ports or whatevers, but I'm actually going to go in the other direction for this one. Since it is the most familiar one, we'll hear a little of the music for the jungle stage from the NES release of Contra, and then we'll hear the full version of the jungle stage from the original arcade game. Kazuki Moraoka composed the arcade cabinet's music, and then his soundtrack was rearranged for the NES by Hidenori Maezawa and Kiyohiro Sada. 
Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start, and go. The Genesis entry into the Contra franchise is Contra Hardcore, and it's got a secret boss battle against this crazy robot that's kinda sorta themed after Simon Belmont from Castlevania. The boss has a whip like Simon, and he throws whole chickens like they're boomerangs. There's a Castlevania boomerang weapon of sorts in the crucifix, and the whole chicken is typically a Castlevania health restoration item, so there's some interesting cross-series flavor there. As you might have guessed from the theme of this episode, the background music for this boss fight is a reworking of Vampire Killer from Castlevania. Specifically, it's this totally crazy thumpa-thumpa rave version of the song. We'll hear some of the NES original from Kinuyo Yamashita and Satoe Terashima, and then we'll hear Contra Hardcore's very intense remix from composers Hiroshi Kobayashi, Michiro Yamane, Akira Yamaoka, Hirofumi Taniguchi, and Aki Hata.
This episode of Shujin Academy VGM Club is brought to you by me, Professor Tom, host of Shujin Academy VGM Club, America's number seven video game music podcast. National Podcast Day is every September 30th, which was a few days before I recorded this episode, and to mark this important occasion, I'd like to shout out other great VGM podcasts like Bar Silence, VG Emporium, REVGM, KVGM The Last Wave, A VGM Journey, Nerd Noise Radio, Super Mercado Brothers, Singing Mountain, Very Good Music, BG Mania, Rhythm and Pixels, Pixel Beat, and The Sound Test. All these great shows will be linked in the show notes for this episode. Now, back to the show. It's been well documented that I think OutRun is one of the greatest racing games of all time, and that it's got a soundtrack full of stone-cold bangers. Because OutRun was incredibly popular, and because Sega likes money, it got a whole bunch of ports to different platforms. By my count, there were at least 11 contemporary ports of the game to computers and home systems, not to mention re-releases of the game for later console generations. Each port has its own take on OutRun's iconic soundtrack, and I could probably build an entire episode doing a comparison of all of them. There are some really cool versions of the original arcade tracks. I'm going to play a song from one of these ports now, and I've chosen the Sega Master System version of Magical Sound Shower. While the Master System had an FM audio add-on, or at least the Japanese version of the system did, I'm choosing to play the song from the Bass Master System hardware, because it's got that different-but-the-same kind of vibe that I'm exploring on this episode. Anyway, OutRun's original music was composed by Hiroshi Kawaguchi, and I'm not sure who did the music for the Sega Master System port. It may have also been Hiroshi Kawaguchi, or it might have been someone else. If you know, please reach out to me on Twitter. Once again, I'll play a little of the arcade original before switching to the Master System version.
I've got another alternate take from the Sega Master System for our next track, which means I'm playing two Master System songs on one episode, and I'm pretty sure that's a record. Golden Axe Warrior is a spin-off of the Golden Axe franchise that uses the barbarian fantasy elements of the series and puts them into a Legend of Zelda-style top-down adventure instead of a side-scrolling brawler. As 8-bit Zelda clones go, it's one of the best, about the only criticism people levy at it is that it's too much like Zelda, and I'd say that more of Zelda is a good thing. Nowadays, it's also one of the most expensive cartridges in the Master System library. Copies of it will run you over $200 on eBay. Anyway, Golden Axe Warrior's soundtrack from composer Chikako Kamatani is really good. I'm going to play Wilderness, which is a reworking of original game composer Yu Takata's theme for the first stage of Golden Axe for the arcade. Just like I've done all episode, we'll hear a little of the better-known arcade version before we hear the reworked version for the Master System. I don't need to say anything to establish Yatsunori Mitsuda's soundtrack for Chrono Trigger as one of the greatest of all time. Mitsuda also did the soundtrack for its sequel, Chrono Cross, and that soundtrack features multiple points where it revisits some of the music from Chrono Trigger. As a side note, anyone who likes the Chrono Cross soundtrack should take time to listen to the soundtrack for Radical Dreamers, the Super Famicom visual novel that's a sort of rough draft of Chrono Cross. Yasunori Mitsuda did the Radical Dreamers soundtrack, and he reused quite a bit of it for Chrono Cross, but since Radical Dreamers and Chrono Cross are on different systems, they sound different. I'll link to the Radical Dreamers soundtrack in the show notes. Anyway, the sweeping main theme from the original Chrono Trigger got a much more intimate reworking in Chrono Cross as a song called Time's Grasslands Homeworld. The two songs feel different enough that you might not even notice the reused melody on an initial listen. I'm going to play a little of the original Chrono Trigger song before playing the full Chrono Cross track.
I've mentioned before that the soundtrack for Street Fighter III Third Strike is flawless, but I haven't talked much about Second Impact, the often ignored middle child of the Street Fighter III games. Several of the songs on the Third Strike soundtrack are expanded or reworked versions of tracks from Second Impact, and if you like Third Strike's drum and bass sound, you should definitely give Second Impact a try. There are a lot of similarities, but there are enough differences that I think Second Impact's soundtrack is worthwhile on its own. I've got multiple songs from both soundtracks on my list of songs to play on the show at some point. One of the similar songs between the two is Jazzy NYC, a song that actually appears in all three iterations of Street Fighter III. I'll play some of the better-known Third Strike version, called Jazzy NYC 99, before playing the full Second Impact version, named Jazzy NYC NY House Mix. Both soundtracks are credited to Hideki Okugawa and Yuki Iwai. Friend of the show and fellow VGM podcaster Jameson from the Bar Silence podcast is quite fond of Ridge Racer. This ties into today's episode nicely because there's a version of the Ridge Racer theme song that appears in Tales of Fantasia, a Namco RPG released very late in the life of the Super Famicom. We didn't see the original game here in North America, although we did eventually get its remake for the Game Boy Advance. I don't know the context for the Tales version, but I do think it's a fun cover. I'm going to play a little of the arcade original, composed by Shinji Hosoe, and then the version from Tales of Fantasia, composed by Motoi Sakuraba, with help from Shinji Tamura and Ryota Furuya.
That's the show. If you want to reach me, you can email me at shujinacademyvgmclub at gmail.com. Find my channel on YouTube by searching for Shujin Academy VGM Club or use the link in the show notes. I'm on Twitter at Shujin VGM Club and on Instagram at Shujin Academy VGM Club. Please leave me a five-star rating on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you're finding this episode. Look for new episodes on Thursdays whenever I get them done, which is typically once or twice a month. Special thanks for this episode goes out to fellow VGM podcaster Jameson of Bar Silence Podcast for contributing cover art. You can and should find Bar Silence Podcast wherever you download podcasts, and you can find him on Twitter at Bar Silence VGM. If you liked this episode, there's another VGM podcast called Nerd Noise Radio that did a series of episodes called Face Off Friday, where they'd play songs from an original game, followed by versions of the same song from the game's ports. I'll link to those specific episodes in the show notes for you to check out, and you should also check out their whole show. I've got one last alternate VGM take to play us out. It's not from the world's most famous game, but it is a game that has great historical significance. As we all know, the very first song I played on this show is Fujiyama Oriental Golf Club from Neo Turf Masters, and typically the version of that game you can find is the original cartridge, but it was also released for the Neo Geo CD with a Redbook audio soundtrack instead of chiptunes from the Neo Geo Sound Driver. So, to close out our journey through alternate VGM takes, we'll hear the arranged version of Fujiyama Oriental Golf Club from Neo Turf Masters CD. The two versions sound quite similar, so I'm not going to play the original, but I love the Neo Turf Master soundtrack so much that since this track mostly kinda sorta fits into the theme, I'm going to use it as my playout track. I believe both versions were composed by Takushi Hiyamuta. Thanks for listening. I'm Professor Tom, and I'll see you next time on Shujin Academy VGM Club.